In this lecture, I'm just going to go through a couple of problems in your packet that have to do with using Kepler's third law. Now, as I said, this can get kind of complicated. The algebra can be messy, and we are going to have to be careful with a lot of things, including doing the appropriate conversions. So, um, you know, make sure that as we're going through this, if you need time to pause or rewatch, you take that time. You're going to have to do a lot of problems with this, and it's going to be really important that you understand how to do all of these problems. So I'm going to start with number 12, which deals with a planet going around the sun. Now this is a fictitious planet, we're just going to pretend, and it has an average distance from the sun of 10 AU. So that is our value of A. A is 10 AU in this case. Uh, average distance from the sun is the same as the semi-major axis. We're going to be solving for the period, and since we know that it's orbiting the sun, our m1 is going to be equal to the mass of the sun, which is 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. We're going to ignore m2 because whatever this planet is, we'll assume that that is much less massive than the sun, so we're just going to ignore that. Pretend it's not there. Now, before I start plugging things in, I need to get my units right for um, the semi-major axis. So we're going to convert the AU into meters. There's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters in 1 AU. So 10 AU is 1.5 times 10 to the 12 meters. And now I'm ready to use Kepler's third law, which says that p squared is equal to 4 pi squared over g, I'm just going to say m1 because we're ignoring m2, times a cubed. So I can plug things in. g is a constant that I have programmed into my calculator, so I'm not going to bother to write that out. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, if we need that. Fortunately, the algebra isn't too hideous on this. Um, we don't really have to do a lot of um, solving here. So, plugging everything in. Be careful, though, with how you plug things into your calculator with that division. Make sure that you are dividing by the 2 times 10 to the 30th and not multiplying times it. So be careful about that. I would suggest actually plugging these numbers in on your calculator right now and making sure you get what I get, um, because otherwise you may not realize that you're doing something wrong. Now this is p squared, so I still have to take the square root of that to get p. And we'll call that 1.0 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 seconds. It does ask for it in years. That's a pretty ugly conversion. Um, so, but I've got 1 times 10 to the 8 seconds. I know there are 60 seconds in a minute, and I happen to know that there are 525,600 minutes in one year, but if you don't know that, you can go through, there's um, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, and do the calculation like that. And this turns out to be about 32 years. That's that one. The next one, a little bit more complicated. This one's going to be the moon orbiting Earth. If you've ever wondered, how do we know what the mass of the Earth is? Because that sounds like a pretty big thing. You can't sit the Earth on a scale. Well, this is how we know what the mass of um, the Earth is. 
This is a very typical example of finding the mass of an object using Kepler's third law. So I've got the period of 27.3 days. I need that in seconds, so let's do some conversions. There's 24 hours in a day. There are um, 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. So the orbital period of the moon is about 236,000 seconds. I am doing significant figures, by the way. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I got my zeros wrong. Two million. 360,000 and the distance A is 384,000 kilometers times a thousand meters in one kilometer would be 384 million meters I'll switch to scientific notation now. 3.84 times 10 to the eighth meters. And now I can plug into Kepler's third law. Here it is. Again, I'm going to ignore the mass of the moon because the mass of the moon is much less than the mass of the Earth. And we're going to plug in, and this gets kind of hideous now. So I've got 236,000 squared, 4 pi squared over g times m1 times 3.84 times 10 to the 8th cubed. Okay, so I'll start with 236,000, I'm sorry, I keep missing a zero here, 2,360,000 squared, which is about 5.6 times 10 to the 12. I'm now going to do 4 pi squared over g which gives me about 5.9 times 10 to the 11 over m1 and then this big thing cubed is 5.6 times 10 to the 25th. If you do some algebra, you'll be able to see that m1 is going to be equal to 5.9 times 10 to the 11 times 5.6 times 10 to the 25th divided by 5.6 times 10 to the 12. So when we do all of that, I get about 5.9 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, which if you look in the back of your book in Appendix E, you will see that that is about the correct mass of Earth. If you didn't quite get my algebra in this last step here, um, you may want to come talk to me about that during class when you're working on some problems or something like that. And again, be careful of um, your exponents and your units and things like that. So very important to watch all of those units and conversions and everything.